Hello everyone, this is Alex from MenuDocs, and welcome back to an Introduction to Web Development series. Today we're doing a quick little 4.5 or 4.5 episode where we're going to talk about hosting your website with our partner, Oxide Hosting. Today's video is proudly powered by our partner, Oxide Hosting. Get your products hosted by them with their cheap, reliable services. So what are you waiting for? Check them out in the description below. Oxide does a really great job. Thank you to Oxide for sponsoring this video, of course. So, Oxide gave me specific access to a web page so I can show you all how we can build our own website on our own platform here and this is using the oxide hosting platform you can get your own website for as low as two dollars every month it's only two dollars to get your own web page and if you really need the 12 gigabytes of storage you can get it for five dollars a month their prices are amazing and i love using oxide i use oxide for my own personal projects now it's kind of awesome but let's talk about actually hosting your website. The requirements for this episode, well, there are a couple. In the last ones, there haven't been any except a text editor. Well, in this one, there are some requirements. First off, you need to have a website purchased from Oxide Hosting before this. Oxide was gracious enough to give me an account that I can use to show you all how this works. But you all need to purchase your web page here on the website hosting on Oxide Hosting website, which is linked in the description. Once you purchase a website, you will receive an email with your login to the Plesk Control Panel. Now, the Plesk Control Panel is going to be what you're going to use to interface with your web page. This is where you're going to be able to get all the information you need to get your web page up and running. So, let's get started here. We're going to do a quick tour here, and then on my personal channel, we'll go over the mail tab, and we'll also go over the databases tab, but we'll go over those on my personal channel, which is also linked in the description if you would like to see these features, as I do not think they fit into what this series is about. So, on here, you have your dashboard, you have your files and databases, your security, and your dev tools. Things like dev tools are like PHP settings. You can pull from Git, a PHP composer. We have WordPress, Node.js, Ruby, your SEO toolkit, Google PageSpeed Insights, which is really nice. And over here, we have the Google Authenticator. We also have logs and applications, which are both useful if you're running a full enterprise web page. FTP access I'm not going to show because that is information that you all do not need to see, but we will talk about sending files through the FTP access instead of just uploading them through the file page. We also have your hosting access, your mail, and your plus gaps. So, in your mail here, you can create email addresses with the email that you previous, or the domain that you register, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. You can also control the settings for this, so you can turn off email on this. You can edit the number of outgoing message and mail sent to non-existent users. Just say no. You can also control the outgoing mail, how things work, but you do have to get an application for that, and it is free to get, and all you have to do is just go and install it in the Applications tab, which is where we're going next, actually. Down here... We can go to all available applications, and I don't know completely where it is. I think it's in collaboration. It's one of these, I think. I'm not completely sure. It might be over here. I'm not sure. But you can just as easily, it shows you in here. If you go to the outgoing mail control, you can just click this. It allows you to control everything. Next up, we have the Files tab. This shows you where all your files for all your web pages is. We aren't going to be uploading over here. We're going to be using an FTP client to show that off, but you can do it on their Plesk site right here. Next up, we have databases. Databases are things like SQL databases. They are not no SQL, but you can use an SQL database just as easily integrated with your system. 
Again, if you would like to see usage on databases and the email system, go to the link below and find my YouTube channel. I have both episodes covering that up there right now. Next up, we have statistics, showing you disk space usage, traffic, and it's actually looking pretty good over here. Now, I did use this earlier just to test it out and make sure everything was working, which is why you're seeing information here. Usually there's no information available, but we'll talk about all of this stuff a little bit later. Now let's go to users. Now, a lot of stuff's going to be blurred out here. But you can control, you can add users to this account if you would like people to be able to access your web page and the Plesk interface. You can also change the roles that they have in case you want them to only be able to do specific things on the website itself. In the account, you get all the personal information that you have about your web page itself. And under WordPress, you can actually use a WordPress website here. I'm not going to be showing how to do this at all because I am not a huge fan of WordPress, but if you all would like to do it, there are plenty of tutorials online on how to use Plesk with WordPress. You also have your SEO toolkit. This just, it, it talks about search engines and things. You don't really need to worry about this because it's just giving you statistics and things, and if you really want to know what all of this does, yeah. It gets complicated. Anyway, let's talk about domains. So it does not come with a domain built in. So you gotta get your own. I used a free nom one just so I could have one to show for this episode. All you're gonna do is hit add domain. You fill in your domain name, where the website's files are, if it's a website hosting or forwarding, the document root, which is the home directory of it, um, your preferred domain, um, and then we, we'll talk about securing on our actual web page. Since I already have one on here, we aren't going to worry about that, but you can do it yourself. It's really not that hard. You just have to fill in a couple of uh, pages. So, next thing up. We need to talk about name server pointing. When you add a domain, it will tell you that you need to point the name servers for your domain at their servers. So, how do we do this? Well, Wherever you purchased your web domain from, you need to find the name servers tab, which is right here for Freenom, and tell them to use the name servers that you enter. And it'll give you two name servers that you need to forward your website to. And all you need to do is then hit save or change name servers, give it a moment, and there we go you now have the name servers changed. Now this can take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to populate, so it can take a little bit for you to actually be able to see the changes and for the website to refer to this one. But the good news is, since we need to upload files over to our website so we actually have a website, we have the time. So guys, let's talk about FTP. If you go onto your dashboard, oop, I just went to PHP settings, not important, okay, and you'll hit FTP access, which I can hit, but I'm going to have to block a lot of this out, there you go, and then you just click on this, and it'll give you all the information that you need to connect to the FTP client. I have all of this on a copy and paste on a notepad on a different screen, because you all do not need to be able to see the password that's on here, because... Well, you don't. Even though this will already be gone, you don't need to see it. And you can hit connect. I'm using FileZilla for those of you who would like to. And there we go. The default folder is HTTP docs. Which, if we open it up, there's nothing in here. Usually there's a default site, but I got rid of it to save us a little bit of time because it can take a little bit for it to delete. Now, let's just copy our files over right in there. And if you're deleting things, make sure you leave the dot well known file as this is very important for SSL later on. And then once everything's done here, you'll see all the permissions appear and all the owners. And then all you have to do is go to File, Close Tab, and X out. And there you go. Now if we go to our File Manager, in our HTTP docs, 
look at this. Everything that we just uploaded is right there. Now if you go to the domain that you selected earlier, you should see menudocs.tk right here. Now this is a little bit of a glimpse for you all into what our actual web page is going to look at the end. Don't worry, there's going to be a lot more information here and we're going to have some scrolling stuff. But for right now, this is the web page we have. Moving on. SSL certificates. Let's talk about SSL. SSL is complicated to say the least. And Let's Encrypt makes it really easy. So let's talk about how to make this work. All you need to do is hit the get it free. Select an email address where they can contact you. I would hit the wildcard domain, that way it secures everything you could need. All you need to do is hit get it free. Now, SSL certificates do take a while. They can take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes to apply and anywhere from 2 to 3 hours to apply to the website. Although sometimes you can get really lucky and it'll just instantly propagate. And the good thing with Plesk is normally they can get it on your web page like look at that we're already secured it takes anywhere from five to ten minutes for Plesk to do the entire thing mm hmm well then looks like we need to assign the certificate to the mail domain as well that way we are defended completely across all platforms it's a really good idea to secure them all guys that way everything is secured and especially if you decide to use the email service that way um, gmails gmail usually voids it if you don't have a uh, secured imap pop and smtp so just take the little bit of time select the check mark and let it go this does take a little bit longer because you're securing everything and not just two or three things so We'll be back in a second when this is all done, and we will get back into a couple more things before we end it up. Alright guys, there you go. It says it's installed. It says it's secured here. Now there's a couple of settings I like to turn on. I like to turn on HSTS and OCSP stapling. Now HSTS just says that you have to connect on HTTPS, or it'll just say no. So. Mm. We're just going to hit enable there. And then for OCSP stapling, I like turning that on just because it means that um, it's really simple. If you hover over these things and click on it, it tells you. It just means that it's going to make it a little faster instead of them having to load the certificate, the server will load it for them. It's very nice. Look at that. And there you go. Your entire web page is seamless right through. And you have a website on your personal domain. Now, guys, again, if you would like to watch and see how to set up an email or a database with Plesk, make sure to check out the links in the description and look for my YouTube channel. Everything's uploaded there already, and it's ready for you to go. So, guys, Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in episode 5. We have another CSS packed episode. Hope you all enjoyed today. And go choose Oxide.